Hey, all you Live All Good podcast listeners. This is the Spotlight series for February. We do a catch up with Honey Bunny. We did a podcast with them a few months ago. So we're going to check in with them and see what's new, what's going on. And I'd like to introduce you to a new business, Blue Monarch Communications. Stay tuned. You get to hear everybody coming up next. Hey, everybody. Welcome back from that short break. Uh, We are here with our first family of natural bath and beauty products, Um, minus one family member. She can't be with us today, but we are here with Naya, Zuri, and Andre, the Byers family. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good, good, good. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for joining Um. We just wanted to catch up with you guys since um, we had done a podcast a few months ago and kind of introduced what you guys were doing with the uh, bath and and beauty products. Uh, But before I ask a a question of what's new or what you guys have going on, I would really like to share with my listeners. um, This is unsolicited, you guys. Like they have no idea what I'm about to share, but I also use their products. So is that okay with you guys if I share um, what products I use and and how they work so well for me? Yeah, Yeah. go ahead. Awesome, cool. Um, And again, for any listeners who might think this is solicited or advertising, uh, advertising, it is not. It is completely from a customer point of view. Um, So I use about four different products, I think. I use the, the, um, the, Body soaps, the facial soap. Um, what is the um, the one facial? It's like a a cream. Uh, oh, I forget what it's called, but I use one of the creams for the face, and then I use face cream. I guess we'll call it face cream. That works. <laughs> it might be the marula, the marula, or the rose hip. Yes, I've used both of them actually. And then I also use the, um, I guess it's the body butter. Is that what it would be called? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I have to tell you, so I'm, I, I love the products. Um, the definitely the, the soaps, um, they do not leave like a film, you know, they, they definitely help the natural exfoliation of, of, um, your, your skin, you know, um, but I also have to say that cause I have psoriasis and, uh, it's, it's a different form of psoriasis. It's called guttate psoriasis. So it shows, shows up in little drop like forms. And I have to tell you that the, the body butter and the soaps, um, man, they have worked amazingly in helping me exfoliate the skin, but they've helped in keeping it hydrated, uh, moisturized. And uh, I wish I had found your products many, many, many years ago (laughs) because so many people go to um, the doctor and they get different creams and steroids. And, and I was one of those people. And while those things work um, you know, you tend to wonder about the long-term effects of what you're putting on your body and, and steroids can have a different effect for different people. So uh, truly, truly from a customer's uh, point of view, I thank you for what you guys are doing. And uh, even if we weren't doing this podcast, I will still be a customer, but I promise you like, seriously, your guys products are fantastic. Like uh, truly. Wow. You know, I don't know. It, it's got me through the cold weather for sure. So that's, that's uh, amazing. And, and when we first started, our thought was that the target market would be people with newborns. And right, it, right. It, we thought that would be our sole market. It's just, you know, mothers who didn't want mm-hmm. artificial ingredients on, on their on their baby, only wanted pure, simple mm-hmm. items. We never thought that. And you're not the first person to tell us they have some skin condition. We've also mm-hmm. received um, 
comments from cancer patients and and how and I can with, imagine mm-hmm, dealing with the dry skin mm-hmm. from their from their uh, chemo treatments mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. utilizing like Lux and, and body butters and how it was doing the same if not better sure. than some of the the uh, things that they were getting from the hospital. We even had nurses recommending honey mm-hmm. honey product for so skin conditions and so we are beyond elated by the progress that you've seen. And, Absolutely. And if you're and if you like if you're like sick or something, you can just get your laptop or or the phone and you can go to mirror.com or Honey Bunny. Um you can go on your laptop and just order something if you don't like feel like getting up and going to the shop. I love it. That is a great plug. So everybody just listen to that. If you cannot get to the shop or if you don't live in the area, just that, that was, that was you Zuri, right? Yeah. Awesome. So just like Zuri said, um, you can get on your laptop, you can get on a computer. I'd be willing to bet you can get on your phone, go to near.com or honeybunny.com and, and put in your order and they can ship it to you. And just, if you can't get on, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Andre. I was just gonna get the correct domains because she's absolutely right. Except the domain, so it's near dot delivery, and ah. and honeybunny dot boutique. Gotcha, yep. honeybunny dot boutique and near dot delivery. And if you're having trouble getting on those sites, you can always get to them. You can reach out to uh, us on the podcast here, and we will definitely get you the right links. Um. So with, with my personal testimony of your products, <laughs> why don't we, what, what do you have uh, new or what are you working on at the moment? Uh, well, um, we're starting to design, you know, containers. To, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and we're, <laughs> um, we are also figuring out because we're like making bioplastic because we don't uh because we think that we, if we give them plastic they'll just like throw it on the foot like on the ground mm-hmm. and and stuff so we're making bioplastic and most of them have broken apart <laughs> even more of them even more of them your experimentation um, has not, <laughs> so you don't have the bioplastic just yet, huh? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. And um, God. we've recently started on trying to make soap containers. We've, oh. we've bought like these molds of some kind and we're filling it up sure. with soap and, you know, trying to make containers out of that. We've only tried okay. one time as that was kind of mm-hmm. a flop. But. Yeah, because because uh, I don't I don't remember what happened, but I think um mm-hmm. I think the top was a little bit too big for for it. No, no, what? no. Daddy was manhandling it, just destroying it while pulling <laughs> it off of the mold. It wasn't even ready yet. <laughs> so I tend to get a little excited, and I I tend to a little uh, just just a little bit, just a tad excited. And so really, before the before it's really ready for us to unmold and try, I I, I kind of it's true. Yeah, I kind of I kind of <laughs> prematurely unmold, and then they fall apart. I still it's like the fifth time I've done it, and I still haven't learned the lesson. But the beautiful the beautiful part of it is. <laughs> You know, and why it's so exciting, right? Why it's so exciting is that, like, mm-hmm. they are on this quest to have zero waste product. And so yes. we've been trying yeah. to do this bioplastic, and we continue to try. And as Yuri said, it continues to break apart. And I was like, you know what? Hey, we, we, kind, of, we kind of have, like, mm-hmm. solid soap down. Mm-hmm. We got mm-hmm. the solid soap down, and we've got liquid soap, hand soap, like, why can't we create 
Anything. Some kind of like, yeah, so some kind of no, 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 no! Don't even uh, try. Like it, it was your idea. I know you saw it off the internet. <laughs> wow! You showed us the video. Wow. <laughs> you showed us the video. Wow! wow. We don't, <laughs> we don't want to, we don't want to give away our secrets. <laughs> so, so this is this is secrets away. No, so the the babies, they're gonna keep you honest, right? So this is the stone cold facts. Right, exclusive, <laughs> right. Right. exclusive for you in this podcast. Stone, I love it. Facts, I love it. I love the it. The idea, we, the idea, we take it right. The idea was generated from the bioplastic concept. But I so hold on, this is Stone Cold Fact. While researching how to create bioplastic, there was a, mm. an example done in Europe where they were creating coffee mugs made out of like cookies. And wow. so they were like, they they came up with a way to make it so that your container was edible. And I said, sure. hey, hey, maybe we've got solid soap. That's where the idea mm -hmm. came from. And then as trying to make sure we we were the first ones with the idea, began to research yeah. online and realized that there's some company in, in another country that has created like a, a soap in soap container found that after the fact but we are dead set on having a better design and uh and and even theirs has a little bit of weight so ours ours will be better well you can you can be the first in this country to do that exactly. <laughs> you can be the first in the united states i love it though so i want to ask you guys something also in the in the process of trying to create and innovate something new and completely biodegradable um, what is the most fun that you have with the failures? And because if, if you think about it, they're not really failures, right? It's just one more step until you get to the right mixture of what you want. So if it doesn't quite work, maybe you've had some fun in the mess that was made or something hopefully didn't explode too bad, but let me know what, what has been maybe some of the fun in creating and innovating. One thing uh, we were, we were trying to do is we were, we were trying to like uh, grab some cardboard and try to like make a rocket. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, that did not work out. So that <laughs> my and dad he had the camera up too close to the rocket, and then <laughs> and the steam got all on it, and and now it just has a whole bunch of stuff on it, and and we don't like it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, sounds like it's time for a new phone. <laughs> yeah, and um, one rocket it went up, but then it went. I think it went in circles and then fell right back down. And the way oh. we got the idea, well, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really remember when where we got the idea, but I remember that we were um, looking online to seeing like rockets and and stuff. They used it um, as a cardboard box, as like a cereal bar box. Um, ah, nice. And it okay. went right up, and we trying, and and we made the same ingredients that they used for that rocket, but I, mm. but I don't know, cause we were thinking that like the wings were too like big and heavy, so it wouldn't be able to get up. So we tried to make smaller ones, but that still like didn't it. work. So, so she's, she's not telling you uh, why the rocket wings were so large. You want to tell them why the rocket wings were so large? What what were they shaped as, and and who made them? And so they <laughs> 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 made them as uh, triangles. No. no, wait, no, I forgot the it's name. A, a heart and stars. Oh so, yeah, a heart and they, stars. They, they were designing their own rockets, and so uh. they were making so many that I thought we we do better if we started working together collectively and just building one sure. rocket. And so Zuri was in charge of doing the wings and Zuri, she's so optimistic and everything's beautiful and, <laughs> and rainbows and, and unicorns. And so she thought, and I thought quite brilliantly, well, why can't the wings be made to look like hearts and stars? 
And I, Absolutely. Yeah, I said, hey, nothing, we, nothing wrong. With that. Know, hey, that's your imagination, baby. Let's run with it. So we made a uh, heart shaped and star wings that were humongous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't cut them. Dad did. Well, I didn't. I didn't design them. So, well, in, either way, so like the wings were about the same size as the rocket, and then we're shocked and in awe when the rocket won't leave. The I ground. wasn't. I wasn't. Sure, I told you that. sure. I told you that. Well, that's the last time we do a collaboration. Well, it's always like. That. Well, I, 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 I mean, it's not my fault. It's not your fault, baby. It's, it is. <laughs> It's not. It's I just, I just, I just, um, like rainbow, um, rainbows, unicorns, hearts, <laughs> and stars. Um, I love it. And <laughs> the the one time that I made something on her own, it would have mm-hmm. just um blood and and um. Let's not talk <laughs> about my gory rocket design. <laughs> and it has some scary stuff you on it. You can always tell the different personalities in the design. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, the collaboration rocket we did, they had, it was just like, <clears throat> the wings were just like hearts and stars and then the base of the sure. design was just blood and knives and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and well, it, we, so I would say maybe that's part of the benefit of and the fun of the experiments is that you know we we try to have fun with it. We try not to knock true. down anyone's idea. We just force everyone to accept everyone's contribution and and see what happens. And so even I do like the collaboration. It, that sound that that definitely works well. I think uh, and sorry, Andre, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry no, about no, that. No, 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 you're absolutely but, fine. Do you find, and uh, girls, you can actually talk about this with the business, I think. Do you find that working together on the Rockets also helps you working together when you're working on the different products? Um, No. Because that's, no, because that's like different things, um, different certain things. So when we collaborate on... A one thing that is fun, pretty okay. much fine, but when we co- when we collaborate on another thing, we just um end up saying something and start fighting. Ah, uh, okay. So it actually is helping you find that happy place to work together, where both of you are compromising. Yeah. So okay. maybe next. I like. That. So um maybe. Next time we should see what the one like um mm-hmm. like one person should make um make something that the other person likes. That's a great idea. I I like that. That's I, I think you guys probably work better together than you think you do. But I love the idea of how you guys continue to try. Yeah. That's a yeah, good they thing. have to. That's they, a good thing. There's this recurring mantra. Uh, that they've all learned, right? Because I always say what to you two. Work together, suffer together. So say it loud so you hear me. What, <laughs> what is the mantra? Work together or suffer together. And there mostly all of them, I'd rather suffer together. Right. So no matter, no matter what, <laughs> they've come to the conclusion that they either have to come and settle their differences and figure out how to solve mm-hmm. the problem collectively mm-hmm. together because they mm-hmm. do not want me to intervene and have to sell it for them. And so I sort of I, I make them sound- work together. Yeah, so so That's- like um the one thing um so me and I are like Naya's upstairs, I'm downstairs and then dad mm-hmm says Naya to come down here and to help me with something. Well, actually, no, Dad said to help Naya with something. And she is like, no, I don't need her help. And then I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> um, so I I go up, back upstairs and then said, mm-hmm. you better get down here. And then I was like, but she doesn't need my help. <laughs> exactly. And, like, he'll force her to help me with things. They're like the simplest things that nobody would need help with whatsoever. Yeah, so um, I come down there and I said, but she doesn't need help. But she, he said to help her anyway. And, uh, and then I asked her, what do you need help with? And she's like, nothing. So 
I say, see, she doesn't need any help. And see, this is the, this is also the benefit of a lesson that I've learned uh, a million times over in my in my own life because I often tell sure, Naya sure. because Naya has this 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 solitary streak where she just wants to do everything mm-hmm. by herself, and I tell Naya over mm-hmm. and over again, Naya, the Pharaohs did not what did the not. Pharaoh, um, I know. I want Naya to answer. I tell Naya the Pharaohs did not what. Build the pyramids by themselves. Say it loudly. Build the pyramids by themselves. And I tell her mm, that is we true. We are building pyramids, but the pharaohs did not build the pyramids by themselves. You cannot do everything. You can do some things by yourself, and you can succeed a little bit by yourself. But to build things that are going to inspire generations 5,000 years from now, you have to do it with other people. So stop trying to do it all by mm-hmm. yourself. Figure out how to incentivize and collectively work with others and you're going to build something so much grander than you would do by yourself. And so I do force her to work even though she can't do it by herself. Sure. She's got to figure out how to build bigger and better with more people. Well, it's also, it's a great foundation uh, for that pyramid because the pyramid can't stand without a great foundation. And it's also working together. You get to learn great leadership skills. Both of you, I think are going to be great leaders, but great leaders also have to learn how to follow sometimes. And that's how they learn the lessons for great leaders. You guys are doing uh, a great job. I, I just want to let you know that even though you may think that your dad is forcing you to do something. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we're going to uh, invite you over more. Lee. Did... We're going to have you come over every day just to <laughs> settle them down. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Sure thing. <laughs> I, I can even add to your labor force, <laughs> if you will. We love it. <laughs> you put kids to work. So, I wanted to go ahead and let our listeners know um, we talked about a coupon code. Is that right? We we have a coupon code. Can I uh, can I mention that? The sure. Coupon code? Yeah. So for all the listeners who um, are listening to this episode, I'm not going to post the code. You have to listen to it. So the coupon code is L A G fifteen. That's L-A-G-1-5. And that is a 15% off of any order. So again, the uh, website is honeybunny.boutique. And near, what was the, it was near dot, near dot delivery. And if you, again, if you're having trouble getting to those sites, you can reach out to Live All Good, either on our podcast, website, email address, um, reach out to us and we will get you in touch with them. But that coupon code is good until March 31st, uh, 2021. So uh, I would love to check in with you guys again in a few months, uh, see how the, uh, first to see how your rockets are going. That's always amazing to hear. Well, about we haven't rockets. done the rockets in a while. That's sort Cause, of uh, cause well, we're, the weather, cause, I'm um, sure. Yeah. Um, and we haven't done, uh, I still really haven't figured out what we're going to make that I want to make. I think I want to make uh, uh, a flying um, hoverboard that has this all Ooh. kinds of stuff. I would love to check in with that, Zuri. We will definitely come back and do another podcast with that. And if you guys have any more um, innovations or any new products, we'll definitely check in again and would love to see how the uh, bioplastic and how the um, the soap containers are coming. Does that sound good yeah. for you guys? Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, I thoroughly appreciate you guys, uh, appreciate you guys uh, joining me today and, and having a, a, a catch up and a check in. It is always, always entertaining and fascinating to talk to you guys. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to leave with our listeners before we go? Search online or um, tell their friends about Honey Bunny and say, 
today, you better get over here and buy um the stuff. And the thing, when they come, I would say, you touch it, you buy it. <laughs> you touch it, you buy it. That's good advice. That is great advice. Andre, it's Always. been a pleasure. And uh, please... Please tell Lee that uh, hopefully we'll see her when have or have her on the the next episode. And until then, you guys, we will catch up with you uh, in a few months. See see how you guys awesome. are doing. Thank then. you for having us. All right, sounds good. All right, everybody, uh, that was our first family of uh, natural bath and beauty products. Um, thank you for listening to this segment, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the last segment. Well, here we are in this segment with Arva Thomas, the owner and CEO of Blue Monarch Communications. How are you doing, Arva? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Lee. Really, of course, it. of course, of course. Um, so, just to let listeners know, what what is Blue Monarch Communications about? Blue Monarch Communications is my coaching business. It's actually communications. We're starting out with communications coaching, though. So I am teaching people and coaching people with their public speaking skills, teaching them how to improve their public speaking so that they can, if they want to get noticed at work, get noticed at work. If they want to have the guts to get up and speak their truth and Mm. live their best life. Mm. That is what I'm here for. I am here to build your skills and your confidence. So you can live your best life. So, so really empowering your, your clients to feel comfortable in the public arena, wherever that might be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. exactly. Whether that's in their professional life or in their personal lives. Okay. Okay. So, so how did, um, how did the whole thought process come about? Cause I mean, it, it sounds great. And as a, a health and life coach, I, I fully buy into what you're doing, you know, like right. having, be, having the ability to empower someone to speak their truth. And, and, and I love your focus with the public arena, right? Or, or whether it's professional or private, but mm-hmm. the public arena, so that you feel confident in your story. I, exactly. I fully believe in that. Um, so, so how did that idea, how did that kind of come about for you? Sure. So I am actually a corporate trainer in my day job. As we see, I work for the federal Mm -hmm. government and I have a background in teaching K through 12. I used to be a Spanish teacher. I've also taught at the university level as well and also online. So Oh, so My this is just career. <laughs> this is just the next evolution. This is a yes. easy step for you. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. So I started out as a teacher and morphed okay. into a corporate trainer, whether nice. that was officially or unofficially, uh, okay. while uh, doing my duties at, at work. Nice. nice. And I realized that this is what I love. I come from a long line of teachers and preachers. My mother is a teacher and administrator. Mm -hmm. My father Mm -hmm. became a teacher later on in his life and was also a minister. Mm -hmm. And I have several, several ministers in my family, several teachers in my family. So Mm -hmm. really it's in my blood. But what I learned was that teaching high school was not my passion. That is not what I loved. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wait, you you mean you don't like the uh, the adolescent know it all? No, <laughs> you've never been in my position before, teenagers. <laughs> you you found out that that's not your passion. What? I don't understand. Oh, no, Mm-mm. definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, that was not my passion. That was. <laughs> 
that was not where I wanted to, that's where, <laughs> that's not where I felt I could most effectively use my gift. Right. And right. it wasn't until, now I did enjoy teaching at the college level. I mm -hmm. really enjoyed that. The kids were older, mm -hmm. you know, they had a little more self-discipline. Just a touch. It, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that touch makes a difference. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. So uh, after I got my master's and I started mm -hmm. teaching in, or rather I started working in education, mm -hmm. but at the federal level. Right. And I started giving workshops, telling mm -hmm. the constituents or rather our partners mm -hmm. and um were really partners about mm -hmm. the programs that we had that would be impacting their students you know how best to avoid default teaching financial literacy teaching ah, okay. know, all, all of those things so that morphed into that and I loved it I loved mm, it okay. and so over the course of my career in education at the federal level mm -hmm. I have had the opportunity to continue that. So I did internal training. I did external training. I presented at national and annual conferences, regional conferences, all of that. And oh, wow. that is my passion. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So just people, if, if you're listening, just to, just to be clear, listen to the the depth and wealth of knowledge this is not just a hobby for you this is something no. that you have been doing it's yes. something uh that you bring a lot of expertise to so yes. that's yes. awesome thank Very you cool. yeah i've been at it for more than 25 years now no oh, just just a little bit then so just you a little bit. <laughs> you might actually know something about public speaking just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> oh, just a little bit. And so I've reached a point in my career where I finally have the title to go with what I have been doing all along. Ah, and nice. Okay. My entire job now is focused on this, just nice. training, putting training together, delivering training, speaking nice. at conferences, all of that. And I'm also at a point in my career where, and also in my life, where I feel mm -hmm. like, you know what? I have something to offer. And I nice. want to help to bring others along, to mm. give them the benefit of my experience and sure. you know what I have been able to achieve not only professionally, but mm -hmm. also feeling at a point in my in my life, personal life, mm -hmm. where you know what? And I guess they say this happens when you're in your forties. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm well, right on time. <laughs> I, I, I somewhat know that feeling. <laughs> just just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that is where the idea came from for Blue Monarch Communications. And That's awesome. Yeah. So okay. I just want to reach out. My target market is the entry level professional. It's mm, senior okay. professionals, senior executives who mm. are great at their jobs, know their stuff, and mm. they're not very effective at public speaking. Mm. So, so to help them, uh, that, that's actually a great target audience because if you, you can be great at your job. You can be the mm -hmm. best at it, but if you can't express or communicate your expertise at what you do right. to either a potential buyer, if you will, or potential client that you're trying to reach or to your staff so that exactly. they can do their jobs well, then that expertise gets lost, I think. It does. It does. Okay. And you know, you, you want to be able to connect with mm -hmm. your audience, whether that's an audience of one mm -hmm. or 10,000. You want to be able to connect. You want to be able to effectively get your point across and nice. leave nice. them with the message that you want them to remember. And so that is what I am 
I love it. That's that's my aim. That's my goal. I love it. That's I mean that's that's perfect. So I, I'm going to ask you another question, actually. What? Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I I love the Blue Monarch, right? I I know a quick story. A um, couple of years ago, uh, we I built a garden box in our front yard, mm-hmm. and it it was okay. Like something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we actually we did actually we did eat the carrots. So that that. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> but uh, so later on in in the the fall, uh, hadn't tended to it whatever, but found these uh, these these caterpillars. These caterpillars mm-hmm. were all in the, the garden box. They were all throughout the the bed. It ended up being uh, four, five. I think five of them, and. You know, me and my daughter looked up what what exactly what exact caterpillars they were. Mm-hmm. Found out they were monarch butterflies. Okay, yeah. So so um, we tended to them and kept them in a an enclosure. Um, let them obviously mature and grow. Right, kept feeding them that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think three of them ended up coming out of their chrysalises, or wow. is that what you call it, a chrysalis, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So three of, them, three of them ended up surviving that. And now, unfortunately, only two of them, all three of them survived, but mm-hmm. two of them survived fully. The one, like the chrysalis was like half torn or something. And mm-hmm. so it, it emerged with like a broken wing. So it didn't, Aww. it wasn't able to, to live fully. The other two ended up being able to, to emerge and in, in on to their monarch butterfly lives. Wow. So I share that because your your uh, the name of your company mm-hmm. obviously means something. Yeah. And if yeah. you would like to touch on that, that would be great because absolutely, I think, I think that's there's a deeper meaning. It sounds like behind it. There is. There is. There's a deeper okay. meaning that stems from me and mm-hmm. my transformation over the course of my career at sure. work, but also as uh, as a woman, sure, and as a single mom, sure, and and as a black woman. Mm-hmm. So, butterflies have always been. I've always had an affinity for them. Mm-hmm. I can remember being young, visiting my grandmother in the country. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> and uh, she had this huge backyard it was actually a pasture for the horse whose name was snipper <laughs> and my cousin because he snipped my hand but that's another story well let's let's <laughs> let's go I'm, I'm glad you did not choose nipper communicate that's <laughs> right. that might not have resonated as much so very no, no. <laughs> but um but my cousins and i used to run around in the backyard and mm-hmm. play and we were always seeing butterflies mm-hmm. and i never recall seeing as many butterflies as I did when I was a child and the monarch butterflies were just so beautiful. And, Mm. you know, we would try to sort of catch them in the jar and sort of look at them and then let them go once we, you know, could see what all we could see. (laughs) Right. 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 But I, I have loved butterflies in my home. I have decor with butterflies and they signify transformation yes. just as you described mm-hmm. the caterpillar transforming into the butterfly and going through the chrysalis well mm-hmm. i've definitely had a chrysalis period in my life as, nice. as have many <laughs> nice i, I, so... I so. <laughs> and if you're if you're still in your chrysalis that's okay if mm-hmm. you're still a caterpillar hey you yeah. you will eventually come out of that chrysalis <laughs> yes Yes, and and I have come through on the other side. Nice. Doing that, that struggle, which is essential to the butterfly's life, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, if you try to help the the butter to struggle through the chrysalis, then then you actually harm it. Yes, yeah. Well, I think Mm -hmm. we learned that the hard way with that story that I shared, trying Mm -hmm. to do too much other than let them be, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to... It, they they end up forming that chrysalis on their own. It's on their own right. time. So, right, absolutely, right. So having emerged through to the other side, I am that butterfly now. Nice. And so that is where the monarch 
came for the name and Blue Monarch Communications. I love it. Now, the, the blue came from the fact that there is such a thing as a Blue Monarch, but for oh, wow. me, the blue came from the fact that I'm a September baby. Nah. And I love, love, love gemstones. I love sapphires, which, of nice. course, the main ones are blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that is where Blue Monarch Communications came from. So not only is it signifying the transformation that I myself have had mm -hmm. over the course of my life, but it also signifies the transformation that I want to provide for my clients to yes. help them transform from point A to point B, from timid to, to bold, from slow of speech, as they say um, in, in the Bible and describing Moses, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, to you know, being, being able to, to speak your truth, speak yeah. to the mountain, speak to, you know, speak, speak into someone's life even. And be able to captivate that, the feeling of empowerment too, being able to exactly. captivate that. Man, exactly. That, that is awesome. I love, thank you for sharing that because that's, oh, yeah. it not only does that, again, that's what you're pouring into your clients. It's not about a, I'm going to tell you what to do. No, I've been through this transformation pro uh, professionally, personally, mm -hmm. and I can, I want to be on that journey of transformation with you too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. You, yeah. You hit the nail on the head. That yeah. is so true. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's, that's how it works. It's a, uh, like you were, you were mentioning, how your professional life was uh, developing and it became a partnership, right? You talked to the different partners about how to uh, use the different platforms, I think, that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what this right. is too. It's a partnership right. with a, a client in, again, I'm, I'm probably sound repetitive. I probably sound repetitive, but it's a, it's a partnership in empowering them to, become brave enough and courageous enough to speak their truth publicly, right. you know? Right. And everyone has a story to share. So yes. Yes. That's yes. man. That is awesome, man. That is that is well well done. I I you know, um Live All Good is here anytime you want to uh come on the podcast and say, hey, this is what's new. This is what we have going on. We would love to have you back. Um I would love to come back. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what is like one, just for, for this episode, what's mm -hmm. one thought you'd like to leave the listeners with? That is a great question. As it relates to public speaking, mm -hmm. I would say the number one thing that you need to do is you need to prepare you must prepare. Mm. You must know your stuff mm -hmm. because you cannot get up and speak in front of any audience, whether, as, as I said, it's an audience of one mm. or an audience of 10,000 if you have not done your homework. Mm. I love it. That is, that's a great tip. <laughs> <laughs> Be prepared. Be prepared. Yes. All right. All right. No, no amount of uh, of coaching is going to help if you don't <laughs> if you don't do your homework. Yeah. As you said, it is a partnership. Sure, sure. If you don't know your stuff, then you will sound like you don't know stuff. <laughs> exactly. And you can exactly. uh, insert any other word for stuff if you like, but <laughs> you know that's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Arva, thank you so much for, for joining us. And uh, clearly, uh, we will have you on again for updates. And we look forward to, uh, you know, seeing what else we could do with Blue Monarch Communication. Thank you. And I would love to let folks ha know how they can reach out. Oh, to please me. do. Please do. Yes. And we'll, yeah. you, can, you can say it here. And we'll also uh, include the links, um, whatever you want. We can include that in, in a, a text as well. Or not text, but... Uh, include links on a post, I should say. Awesome. Great. Well, you guys can reach out to me at bluemonarchspeaks.com. That's bluemonarchspeaks. 
bluemonarchspeaks.com. I am also on Instagram and Facebook at Blue Monarch Speaks. And I am also very excited to announce, and Lee, you will be the the oh. first person to hear this breaking, publicly. Breaking news, people. Breaking news. Yes. Love it. <laughs> love it. We love being first. Yes. Okay, go for it. I am launching an online course. Oh. for my public speaking and it drops March 27th. Oh, so. fantastic. Well, I know come March we'll have to touch base again because yes. if we the, the, you heard it here first, there's an <laughs> online course that'll be dropping you said March 27th? Yep, that's right. Okay. All right. Well, we will be we'll do a, another update and we will let folks know what to expect. And I think um, I can see a future podcast or two. Absolutely. I am so glad. I am so glad. Thank <laughs> you again so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Arva. All right, guys. Uh, we'll be right back. Well, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Spotlight Series for February. It's part of the Live All Good podcast family of podcasts. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed catching up with Honey Bunny just like I did. And I hope you enjoyed learning about Blue Monarch Communication. If there's anything that you uh, need or anything that you missed, please go to liveallgood.com and uh, send us a message. Reach out to us. You can also reach us at liveallgood44 at gmail.com. Don't forget about that coupon code. And we will see you next time for our Spotlight Series.